let me read to you a passage from the 16th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 19 to 31. It's the Gospel for the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Year C. St. Luke writes, Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen, and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Nazareth, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, O oh, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and to the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. That's from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. What does it suggest to us? Well, it speaks of the rich and the poor. What do I mean? Well, the Gospel I've just read presents us with our Lord's famous parable of a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. That's the setting. The message is clear. God's judgment hangs over the one who refuses to give to the poor when he is in a position to do so. The rich man died and was buried, and in his torment in Hades he saw Lazarus, the poor man, a long way off in the arms of Abraham. In his description of the Last Judgment, in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew, Christ as judge condemns to hell those who refuse during life to help those in need. I was hungry and you never gave me to eat. Whatever you did to the least of these, my brothers, you did to me, he will say to them. We are challenged by Christ's parable to ask ourselves, what is my attitude and my behaviour towards the poor person? Am I a little like the rich man of the parable? My salvation and the sanctification to which I am called depend on the answer to this question. But our Lord's story has implications well beyond the concern that an individual has or should have towards an individual who has not. It also concerns the relationship between nations that are poor and those that are rich. The rich man of the story not only represents the rich individual but also rich nations and whole groups of nations. Just as there was a terrible gap between the rich man in the story and the poor man Lazarus, so there is a terrible gap between rich and poor nations due to unequal economic resources and capacity. The teaching of the parable applies to the life of the individual and also to the world at large. It offers the key to international justice and solidarity and thereby the key to peace in the world. Just as the rich man of the parable failed to live in true solidarity with the poor man Lazarus, 
and utterly disregarded and neglected him, so too whole nations can fail to live in solidarity with needy nations. We are all members of God's family. We are all God's children, and nations must keep this in mind just as individuals must. Our world conducts its affairs as if God is no more than the private persuasion of individuals and not the overarching fact of the universe. This lack of a living conviction of the universal fatherhood of God constitutes a worldwide flaw in the life of nations. Indeed, it is one basic reason for poverty in the world. If nations were possessed of a living and agreed conviction that God is our common Father and that we are all brothers of one single family under Him who is our Creator, the policy of nations would, sh would be shaped by a culture of solidarity. Let us also remember that the burden of poverty that oppresses whole nations is not just poverty of food or material aid. It also involves a poverty in structures and institutions. These structures can be channels of oppression that impede development. A poor African nation burdened with a huge debt which imposes a crippling interest rate has no chance to develop. The structure imposes poverty. Because of that pattern of debt and interest, the country continues year after year to be the poor man Lazarus of the Gospel, while the rich nations that do nothing about that debt continue to be the rich man who is condemned. The judgment of God hangs over the rich, and that judgment can take effect not only in the life to come but in this world too. The Church teaches that rich nations have a grave moral responsibility towards the development of poor nations. Of course, this is a complex duty. Institutions created in the poor countries themselves can impoverish their own populations, such as the endemic corruption of the privileged. Now while it is the competence of the Church's pastors to give the Church's general teaching and to insist on moral principles, in its practical detail the service of the poor in justice and charity is especially a task for the laity. A civilization of love has to be built because the creator of the world is love. It is especially the role of the laity to make the world more human, more just, more filled with solidarity, more filled with the spirit and example of Christ. The laity's home is the world and the laity's field of work is the world. Their mission is to apply the parable of our gospel today to the world in all its complexity and detail. The question we could ask ourselves today is, as we listen, as we think of that gospel passage, do I care very much about these matters? What concretely speaking am I doing to promote justice and solidarity between the rich and poor at an individual level in my personal life and further among the nations of the world? Am I even taking an interest in such matters? The poor are there at the gate, and the rich are not far from them. Where do I stand, and what am I doing? Lazarus was taken by the angels to Abraham. The rich man went to hell, not because he was rich, but because he did nothing about the poor man before him.